Hello everyone and welcome back to the British Sim Racers Touring Car Championship presented by Engine All Direct. This is the Pro Series, it's rounds 58 to 60 from the Spa Francorchamps circuit, a historic one in Belgium. Uh, Andrew Woodhouse alongside Adam Bath and Alex Simpson. Alex, Spa, I, I know you love this track, we all do as well and we're going to have over 50 cars racing tonight, it's going to be fantastic. Can't wait to see this. It's going to be an absolutely amazing shot coming down that Kimmel straight the first time. Uh, yeah, like you say, over 50 cars, it's just going to be great. The uh, officials have um, decided to run um, a couple of extra laps due to the chance of a safety car and also we're going to have a rolling start as well to, just to try and um, keep it as clean as possible at the start. It's all going to be important. Uh, nowhere for the um, for any accidents to funnel as well with the walls everywhere. So it's going to be uh, going to be an interesting start. Let's hope it's all clean and we can see an amazing shot of uh, sort of 55 Kias just cruising Good. down that camel street. Goodness me! Um, I, I tell you what, I just have to quickly butt in Adam before you come in with tell us about the championship because we did have our um, successful TV debut this week on Motors TV um, Tuesday night. Tuesday at 5.20 was the first one and then it's been repeated again another two times it's going to be on on Friday at 1.40 as well tomorrow that is for everyone um, watching live that is if they want to see the highlights from the goodness acre again and um, Adam it's so, it's so much fun to be uh, a part of that and you'll be on next week Mid-Ohio yeah Mid-Ohio was a very good race meeting and I'm sure it's going to look great up on Motors TV, Sky Channel 447, Virgin Media 545, and Freeview, I think, is 71. So those are all your channel numbers uh, for that. Let's run you through the championship standings then, going into this race meeting at Spa-Francorchamps. Vo Wojciech Savinovic, as always, is atop the standings by 478 points over David Baker, who is now a new second-place man in the championship with Andreas Katz dropping down to third. I think Katz will be eager to get a win here to try and get that second place back. Fourth is Stelian Chepalevsky with Simon Fee in 5th, Alex Malensky is in 6th with Kip Stevens in 7th, Sebastian Job in 8th and then tied for ninth, Pete Newman and Jamie Rushworth. So tight in the championship there right at the bottom, in the Pro-Am standings it's even closer just with John Roberts and Paul Smith tied, well one point between them, Engine Horse Direct and Stem Sim Racing in the team's championship. However, Engine Horse Direct, 600 point lead over GT Omega, who have moved up into second place with only one win to their name, and that was Dan Hunt. With Stem Sim Racing in third position. Let's move over to qualifying then. Today at Spa Frankfurt, Sebastian Job is at the top of the qualifying tree at the moment, with Wojciech Savidovic in second, uh, less than a tenth between them. Andreas Katz in third, David Baker in fourth, Jamie Rush with Hill's quickest in practice is in fifth. Uh, with Stelian Chepalewski in 6th, Jamie Fluke in 7th, Alex Malensky in 9th, uh, sorry, in 8th, Daniel Kraft in 9th, in ninth, yeah, and Lee Thompson rounding up the top 10, Andrew. Yeah, and um, it's going to be very tight, especially in that midfield part. There's a few drivers at the top, obviously, very close together, but it's the sort of between 15th and sort of 35th, 40th. It's going to be really, really interesting. Um, Alex, there's a few changes for this broadcast. We've got Chaz Draycott coming in to Leo Bodner Motorsport he's, he's coming into there and um, a few reserve drivers and a few um, visual changes to the car numbers as well yeah exactly just uh, those drivers who are obviously running in the Pro or the Am we can now identify those by their number boards as well as the uh, the overlay system as well it's always been there but uh, just in case anyone was wondering so yeah keep an eye out for the uh, for the green number boards and the uh, and the green stripes and that's your uh, Pro drivers the the gold stripes and uh, barge boards um, or number boards sorry are your uh, Pro Am and um, the blue are for your privateers incident it's limit incident limit has been increased as well for this race meeting at Spa it's usually 11 but uh, the that sounds the race length as well yeah the organisers preempting any sort of collision at the start the incident limit has been upped by 3 to 14 so um, we won't, probably won't see as many disqualifications as we've seen possibly in previous rounds uh, qualifying over Andrew so what does the grid look like for the first race of the evening well it looks very much as you described it, Adam. It's uh, Sebastian Job <laughs> on pole position, and then it's Wojciech Savinovic in second, with Andreas Katz third on the second row, with David Baker in fourth, Jamie Rush with fifth, then Stelian Jepelewski in sixth, Jamie Fluke seventh, Smolenski in eighth, Dan Kraft in ninth, and Lee Thompson in tenth. Um, just to welcome a few privateers in as we're going to the grid very, very soon, 
we have got um, two-time iRacing.com P County Free Series champion Ray Alfala uh, from the Oval side, along with his teammate Brian Blackford, who's also a top driver in that series. We've got a uh, German privateer entry, privateer, privately entered team, that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, Max Scheider, Lucas Dolzer, and Dustin Hickman have joined us. They'll be running the yellow Deutsche Post liveries today, so welcome to them. Um, also, Nick McCarran is with us, Andrew Brown, uh, Neil Bamba, uh, Matt that? Walker's back as well, a veteran, Adam. Yeah, Matt Walker used to race back in our uh, season seven and season six, and I think yet to get his first win in the championship. Who knows? That could happen tonight, especially with the reverse grid. A few back of the grids and a few disciplinaries from the previous race meeting. Um, some big names, including Ashley Blake Cud and Simon Fields. They have not set a time on qualifying, and they will be starting in 43rd position. That's a Simon Fields. And 49th for Ashley Blake Cud. Other penalties uh, for Andrew Whitehead. He'll be starting in 52nd place on the grid. 52nd. And <laughs> Dan Hunt from 46th on the grid so those poor guys they'll be going through uh, the bus stop chicane uh, while Sebastian Joe and Wojciech Savidovic are blasting it down to Eau Rouge Alex those guys might as well be starting in another country yeah it's just crazy I'm just looking at them lining up now um, beyond the pace car what a great shot that is as well can't even see half the cars <laughs> we've got <laughs> even, also... we've got um, we're going to have a rolling start as well and that's to sort of touch on what Adam said about um, preempting an incident at the start, which I think I think is probably the right thing to do, as as uh, with such a mammoth grid, and, and as especially well, what happened last time we came here well, as well. Yeah, and especially um, a few random Adam, white cars out there as well, just for trading paints, not playing. Well, not trading paints, but just delivery not picking up quite properly. Let me just see if I can give that a quick refresh before we start this race, because that seems a bit weird that we've got no um, no paint whatsoever. So everybody just uh, yeah wonders why it just goes white for a second. Let's just try and sort them out. Adam, um, Eau Rouge is going to be difficult as well, and I think that's why the rolling start is going to help because they're going to, the guys are going to get at least a couple of corners to. Um, well, well, they're not actually are they because they're going to start on the on the run they're down. They're going to Eau start Rouge. on the run down to Eau Rouge, but they are going to be able to warm the tyres up slightly on this pace lap, and it will be important for them. It is quite a hot day out there. It's uh, 23 degrees, 37 degrees track temperature. Quite a decent wind coming from the southeast. 16 kilometres an hour. Um, this is going to be just so good. Um, Alex, if you have, if you had to bet on anyone, what do you think here? I'd say, I'd say, I'd say, I'd say, I'd say Baker. For some reason, Baker. Baker's going to be quick. Swedish always quick from the front as well. Um, it could be, uh, yeah, it really could be anyone. Right. The pace car is in. And the drivers are going to start after we come round La Source. The green flag is going to fly. They're there. Just biding their time here, rightly so. Look at that sight. There's still people coming round the bus stop. Into La Source goes Sebastian Job. As we run down the hill then, green, green, towards green. our road, the green flag flies. A Spa Francochon, 53 cars heading down towards the compression. And up the hill they go. Joe leads from Sabinovic. Katz in third, fourth Baker, fifth Rushman. Then it's Cepulewski, then Jamie Fluke. Cepulewski's made a mistake, he's opening down to ninth. He keeps going, keeps dropping down the order of the Bulgarian. But it's... Job that leads and Savinovic already under pressure from Andreas Katz towards Lecum for the very first time. Whoa. Savinovic late on the brakes. Can he overlap Andreas Katz? There's a tiny bit of contact there as the the two two of the top three in the championship getting very, very close and personal inside the first few corners. Baker follows through in fourth place. And um, Adam, that was a hectic start for the guys at the front. Yeah, very tight as we headed for Eau Rouge. It looks like everyone's been able to make it through uh, that first few corners without incident. Sebastian Job, of course, building a lead already about 0.6 of a second over Wojciech Savidovic. Katz in third, Baker in fourth, Rushworth in fifth. So it's as you were really at the top as we work our way through the long left-hander at Puan. A couple of cars were off at Le Coon. Um, Ray Alfala's got quite severe front damage. Kevin Noon, Matt Bunn, Charlie Sears already with 
battered Kieran Optimus as we head through the Fanny SGK and Sebastian Job leading and he's trying to stretch his legs there. Alex, um, pretty good start considering. Yeah. Uh, incidents. Yeah, I think um, we could have expected a lot, lot worse. So to get all those cars through there in pretty much intact, even with just a little bit of damage here and there, is uh, yeah credit to um, to all the drivers out there. Adam is quite well behaved at the front, mostly single file, but it may change as they are going to um, filter towards Lacoon next time round. Yeah, that's that long Kemmel straight to slipstream their way past. That's probably where we'll st start to see the slipstream for the first time. Everyone really too close to really use that as an advantage. Sebastian Job just working his way away, but however, Savinovic has got a little bit closer to him as they come over the line. That is the finish line right there. The start line was back at Eau Rouge. That is the finish line, so that's where we'll be taking all the times from. 0.3 of a second is the gap between Job and Savinovic as they came over the line. But Katz is right with the Season 6 champion as they come out of La Source. And now we're going to see how important it is to get a good line for Eau Rouge to set them up as we head down the Kemmel Strait down into Lake Hum. Yeah, Alex, it's massively important, isn't it, this Eau Rouge Radion part of the track, because it's the longest straight on the course. Yeah, exactly, almost, uh, when you're talking in the Formula 1 cars, longest straightaway section flat out for the whole calendar, so lots of slipstream available in these Kia Optimas, and we can see Svidovic getting a little closer, and there's some other drivers getting some slipstream further back as well. Smolensky, he's already been overtaken by Czechoslovakia, looks like it's a slowdown for Steve Burke in the background remember if you cut the course if you exceed the track limits sufficiently the the simulation itself will give you a penalty which you must serve within an allotted time yeah who was that on the other side of the track as well that was just Robert bumping wrong? that was rob fag yeah so rob was up in sort of 12 13th place at the start we just saw a glimpse of him but down to 30th now yeah slow down penalty for both drivers and um yeah that's uh <laughs> wow that's um yeah, normally you expect to lose like five or six places on a slowdown, yeah. they've just lost 15. Um, Steve Burke's just got past Julian Janowski at Rivage. Oh, Janowski comes back and he hits the Pete Newman media driver, and that was a bit silly from Janowski. A bit clumsy. Yeah, they both managed to survive and uh, good recovery, but that pack behind them oh. really has just lost the rest of the uh, the train that was ahead of them. All Janowski, as well, he, he outbreaks himself as well. And Robert Fagg is going to try and take advantage. Fagg trying to go around the outside in Fanyes. Beautifully late on the brakes from the team Carnage driver at him. Yeah, very good moving. It's not often you see him move around the outside going into the Fanyes chicane. He just has enough room there. And now we're heading into the right hand of Stavolo. And then the long, long run through Blanchemont. You probably have to possibly get a dab of brakes through that flat, through that left hander. And then it's down into the bus of the final chicane where we'll probably see a lot of overtakes happening throughout these three races here tonight. Just looking to the left there, just oh, see Steve if Richardson's disappeared. Yeah, he's just uh, vanished there. So either a connection problem or an off track and that's uh, disqualified. I mean, we oh, said I hope he's not disqualified already. Oh, yeah, but uh, yeah, you never know. So it does look like something's um, gone off. Drivers that have um, made it back in the pits. Joe just put the fastest lap of the race in, by the way. Um, let's just quickly jump up to the front while I'll have a look who has made a trip to the uh, pits. Mark Johnston, Ray Fowler, um, Matt Bunn, Kevin Noon, Charles Sears, Andrew Whitehead and Brian... Oh no, Brian doesn't appear to have done but just seems to be at the back so uh, maybe he did. Um, yeah, not the best of days for the NASCAR uh, lads out there for sure. Here comes no, um, uh, Wojciech he again. The day might just uh, get a little bit worse for Sebastian Job actually now as he's really having to defend on the Kemmel straight from Savinovic and Nick from Katz. Katz. We're going to go three wide potentially into Lacombe. But Job decides to, he thinks better of it and that's a mature decision. And a very, very considered one as well. When you consider that the men in front of him uh, in the race now, in front of him in the championship. But Job knows, Alex, that he needs to get those podium credits. He needs to finish in the top three. Yeah, we don't talk too much about the credits that are available for the podium, but um, we obviously have a showdown at the end of the season, and um, every podium you get gives you some points towards uh, towards the start of that showdown. So, podium position for Seb, we don't want to throw that away there. Three wide into uh, into Lacombe, always ends in disaster. It's hard enough to go uh, too wide through there sometimes, so just uh, knew he was on the uh, losing foot there with both drivers getting the slipstream, so he just concedes the position. Hopefully he can fight back later. 
So Dave Baker Adam just took, um, sorry, was just taken by Rushworth. The so Rushworth up into fourth. Rushworth was fastest in the practice session, Adam, but then couldn't really get it together in qualifying. Yeah, and he's a proven race winner in this in this uh, this racetrack as well. Has taken two wins uh, when we were here in season five and when we were back here in season six as well. So he knows how to get it done around here. I expect him during this race to try and mix it up with the guys at the front of the pack, the likes of Katz and Savidovic. And we saw how entertaining it is heading down the Kemmel straight into Lake Con. It's so easy to gain a place and to lose a place there as well as we head through Blanchemont. So if anyone hears us talking about seasons, uh, this is a year-long championship. Uh, which is effectively season nine of the um, British Sim Racers Touring Car Championship. The seasons used to be much shorter, and this is the first time we've really done one that spanned most of the calendar year. And um, it is a mammoth effort, Alex, isn't it? Nearly, nearly oh. 100 rounds. Yes, and, uh, that was, uh, Graham uh, Carroll just takes Pete Newman. Yeah, sorry, that was extremely close at the front there as well. Katz um, tried to put a move there on Swedish, but didn't quite um, manage to get oh, over there. Uh, there, they're cool. Quite fighty, a little bit further back. Rushworth and um, Dave Baker as well. Two by two and, now. Cats and um, Joe as well. Heading down towards Eau Rouge, Adam. It's going to be tight there. Yeah, very tight. And usually it's like going to be like Weber and uh, Alonso from a few seasons ago in Formula 1. But Sebastian Joe just able to hold on to it in second position. But now let's see what kind of runs they can get as they head out down towards Lake Cobb. You can see all the cars, Alex. Um, from oh, some of the wide sorry shots. guys, oh, too wide through a uh, Rouge, Brostrom and uh, Rob Graham, they make big time contact, manage to survive. Maybe I'm um, going to get freight trained a little bit there <laughs> though, I think, wow, there's a lot of cars streaming through there. Uh, Kip Stevens has gone through and still has uh, Stanimir Zuzov, so Stevens up into 15th place and Zuzov into 16th and then that's Brostrom 17th, 18th for Graham, 19th, uh, Jake Blackall. Uh, Blackhawk side 26, he's already made his way through and that's very tight with Robert Graham, Jake Blackhawk for Apex Racing TV and then you see the first of those Deutsche Post entries, Dustin Hickman battling with Robert Plumley, just in front of uh, Laura Bond and then it's Lucas Dozer just ahead of Steve Hefford actually as well so and then Paul Smith at the back of this group who's very high up in the Amp Championship. Yeah, Paul Smith, only one point between him and John Roberts going into this race meeting. Where is John Roberts, in fact? John Roberts is sitting in uh, 44th position. So with Paul Smith all the way up there in 25th, that's definitely going to mean that he is going to get that lead back in the Pro-Am standings. Sorry, I'm not laughing at John there, but it's fun. when somebody says somebody's down in 44th, I'm just not used to it, really. Alex, you're only used to you can only count to 35. That's it, yeah, 35, and I'm not interested. So, yeah, this is just crazy. Speaking of which, we have a tra we have a great battle for 48th place on the track. That's Matt Bunn, Kev Noon, Charles Sears. 42nd place, 48th place. Yeah, all three cars not showing the livery, unfortunately, which is a bit, <laughs> I a think bit frustrating. Coming, I think there's there's they're coming in and issues. out, Alex, to be honest. Yeah, there's definitely some sort of issue with the uh, with the paint files. There you go, one's dropped in, there goes another. So There's, there's so many cars that it, I just, think it just takes a while. Yeah, the Sims are struggling a little bit with um, with that today, so apologies uh, for, the, uh, for the viewers, but yeah. Back at the front then, Wojciech Savinovich leads by six tenths of a second from Sebastian Job. It's now seven tenths. Um, over the endurance pitch straight and he's definitely stretching away as the championship leader and season uh, season six champion sorry apologies about that um, Andreas Katz is in third then it's Jamie Rushworth fourth and look at them weaving around Adam on the straight to try and disturb that slipstream and try and break free of the car behind yeah that's really the number one strategy for the drivers heading down the straight because that's really where we're going to see most of the overtaking uh, for using the slipstream to go into Lake Common also probably down into the bus stop as well so that's what they've really got to do to make sure that they can't get, let that driver pass and that's where we're going to see the exciting racing towards the end of the race Jamie Flukes catching this pack as well Alex he's in sixth and followed by Daniel Kraft and then it's Cepalewski who had a bad start went down to about 10th place but he's fought his way back up to 8th yeah, I think he just put the move on Smolensky just a lap ago. I saw on the timing screen that they were very close. It seemed to have broke apart a little bit and now seems to be uh, lining up Kraft for a little move just ahead of him in the uh, Pete Newman car there. Jerome Kaiser in 10th. Not too far away from um, his homeland of 
Holland and um, doing well in Belgium is Kaiser so excellent for him I mean, and he hasn't been hit off yet off the track yet which is a, a novelty for him <laughs> the night's young <laughs> the night's indeed young 10 lap race we're only on lap 5 um, Kaiser's just behind Smolenski and he's got Lee Thompson behind the former world championship driver in the Apex Racing TV car who is um, he, he's quite well up in the, the standings as well I believe he is 11th. 11th yeah he's trying to break into the top 10 isn't he right now so it's very break, close break back into the top 10 after he had his uh, little vacation so. yep and um, definitely well earned rest for him now then there's going to be some lap traffic appearing for uh, Wojciech Zminovic and Co it's Brian Blackford the NASCAR peak antifreeze star he's not had the best day I think he was involved in some contact at the beginning of the race so um, wouldn't surprise me if he's got a bit of damage on that Kia Optima, but he's soldiering on and uh... let's see let's see if Katz can get a run though through the source what was the lap that was the lap times last time around Sebastian Job 228.9 Katz fastest lap of out of everyone on the last lap 228.3 he looks to the inside just a little bit as we head for Eau Rouge is it the best strategy Alex to be right with him going for Eau Rouge or do you need to try and get a run as we exit this corner right now yeah I think um I think if you're a little bit further back, you can get a better run to actually get the slingshot pass down the Kimmel straight. But with Sebastian getting the slipstream speed of it as well, I think you really want to be tucked up as close as possible. Well, Cass is, down, Cass is down the inside and he's through. So the season yeah. uh, three and eight champion is through into second place. Because I suppose the danger, Alex, is if you're too close to Royal Rouge and you, get the, and you catch them at the wrong time, you can get blocked off through that little kink, can't you? Sebastian having a little weave there, sorry, but yes, you're absolutely right there. Oh, a little tiny Andrew. bit of contact there, I think, I was between. Just looking at the um, the speeds there as well on the uh, timing um, screen, and I think um, uh, I was just sort of overhearing some conversations, and I think that uh, Sebastian might be running a click of extra downforce compared to some of the guys out there as well. So he'll be quick in the midfield section, but he will be vulnerable down the straight. We've seen both Svidovic and Katz get, get past him now. It may help him with tyre wear, though, Adam, as... Um, the Kia Optima obviously struggles with its front tyres in, as you'd expect it to oh, do Chep in these warm conditions. Chepaleski, yeah, Chepaleski, Basile, yeah, sorry, Andrew, with uh, no, Daniel, Daniel Kraft. Um, yeah, the front tyres in the Kia Optima, we've seen time and time again this season how it can affect drivers going into the latter stages of the race. Daniel Kraft then battle for seventh position. He's just in front of Stalin Chepaleski in eighth. Let's see if Chepaleski can get a run through Stabilo and down towards Blanchemont. Stalin Chepaleski in the past has come close to winning the championship. Oh, sorry guys, great battle going on between teammates there. Rob Plumley and Paul Smith hitting each other through the Fanyas chicane. And look at this gaggle here in front and behind the Alex. It's about 10 cars in front, 10 cars behind. Yeah, amazing <laughs> shot there. As, um, yeah. What do you do when you're in a pack like that? I mean, you just gotta, <laughs> right. uh, yeah, you just gotta try and work your way through slowly. Hope people make mistakes, really. Simon Field with his back of the grid penalty is up to 29th only. Oh, so close, to, close to the reverse grid place. Not far away. It's about four seconds behind. Stephen, oh. uh, sorry, Stephen Burke. Yes, who's currently 26th. Excuse yes. me, currently 26th place. Uh, Smith. Oh, there's some contact ahead. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. contact to the bus stop. There's a tall car. 22. Rob Graham. Yeah, off goes Rob Graham. Oh, oh. This, oh, it's all piling up now! Oh no! Stephen Burke turned around. Goodness me! What? Uh, it was a Karen Ballage there! <laughs> Carnage that was, then. that was the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen! It was almost like back in Formula 1 a few seasons ago with De Resta and Maldonado, oh, I think. Oh god, it's not one. over yet, I can tell you. There's oh, more going on. To La Source. Jinovsky having a lunge into La Source on the laser car. Uh, one of the Deutsche Post cars side. Look at this pack! Look at this pack coming down towards Whoa. our roofs, they're all going to end Laura, up in Laura Bond, Laura Bond, in, Steve Hefford, Julian Janowski, Julian Janowski leading oh, this pack. Some people, thankfully, you know they, getting out of it. Oh, good one by Plumley on um, uh, Neil Bamba. And this is a great battle because it's really for the reverse grid placings. This is a battle for 23rd position on the racetrack, two by two as they head down the Kemmel straight, Andrew. Oh, goodness me, Janowski having to defend from Graham. Oh, Graham. Bamba got a great run there. He's like he running no wing whatsoever. <laughs> right on the brakes, just about gets the car stopped to four. He was Whoa, going to oh, he's, got he's, got some, he's got some error damage there. He's not going to be as quick and as straight line as he was. It's the, it's the James Thompson effect. He's using zero wing, and that's allowing you to get past everyone down the straight as we head down towards Ravage. And look who's there, Daniel Hunt. 
from 46th on the grid he's now 25th and he's coming through in Riva in Rivage past um, Hefford Steve Hefford Laura Bond looks like she's heading backwards slightly um, Chaz Draycott there for Leo Bodner in his first race for the team he must wonder what the hell's going on um, why did I get dropped into the middle of all this and then Lucas Dolza likewise thinking what the heck did I sign up for on it so much going on right now I'm just looking at the live timing and um, there's bows all over the place yeah Lucas and Chaz still side by side and behind them Lee Berridge and Ashley Blake Hood as well, Whoa, Max there as battle, well. Between, battle between Graham Carroll and Lee Thompson there, side by side heading into the bus stop and Thompson's going to try and go around the outside yeah. is Thompson that going to work? The brakes. Oh no, but Carroll goes back around the outside and now they're going to be side by side down the front straight into La Source, Thompson and will cut back into the slipstream. They've got company as well haven't they, uh, Colin Cunniff and the lapped car of Blackford and then it's Pete Newman and, and in, up to the inside goes Colin Cunniff and he's looking late on the brakes to try and get past the Apex Racing TV car of Thompson, but Thompson showing his experience to... Um, we've got to give a shout out to Lee as well, he's one of the editors on the Motors TV programme as well, so Alex, he's done a hell of a lot of work and it's, uh, it's good, also good to see him up there on the track. Yeah, all credit to him, wouldn't be able to um, do, do it without him, so him and Alex Marshall need some credit on air as well, yeah, we what happened with them, so... Yeah, big shout out to those guys. Carroll trying to pull away down this back street. Chepilevsky's managed to get past Daniel Kraft as well going into uh, Lake Com, or it might be the other way around, but uh, these two very close as well. GTM Mega versus oh. Pete Newman Media as we head down to Rivage. Daniel Kraft's having a little bit of a look down the inside, just not able to get anything done there. Chepilevsky's still doing a good job. I think he's yet to take a win yet this season. No, he hasn't. GT well. Mega just have that one, thanks to Daniel Hunt. Um, Alex, I'm noticing that Andreas Katz is getting quite close to Savinovic now. And is the German saving his tyres a little bit better? Yeah, possibly, maybe not quite as um, aggressive on the cambers. As the tyres are just staying in a little bit longer. Who knows out there? But yeah, definitely looks a little bit stronger in the second half of this race. And the slipstream effect really does um, really restrict any chance that Savinovic has got to pull away. He's going to have to be extremely quick to do it. And if he's struggling a little bit out there, just can't see him um, breaking away. I expect uh, Katz might try a little move maybe into Lacoon this lap. And behind this top yep. three we've got Jamie Rushworth and David Baker battling in fourth position as well. David Baker right with the season four champion as we head out of Stavolo. Let's see what he can do through Blanchemont. Let's see how how they take this corner. Very demanding in all forms of motorsport. Into the left-hander. Is it a dab of brakes? Yeah, they both dab the brakes just a tiny little bit. Will they run out wide over the curbs? They both do. Let's see what David Baker can do into the bus stop. Rushworth doesn't move across and David Baker doesn't really challenge there. But they'll have uh, two laps to go when they get to the line. These two are smart though, Adam. They know that they want to play the long game. They want to finish the races. Um, Oh, there is the danger as, as actually Baker got a tremendous run out of the bus stop and he actually may um, he may have a look into La Source but sometimes Alex, La Source isn't the best place to get a move done because then you know the drag up the hill you're vulnerable. Exactly that, yeah, right at the moment they're just inside the slipstream of the cars ahead and if uh, Baker had gone for the move he definitely would have broken that, um, broken the gap behind as well so he wouldn't have been able to draft any of the cars ahead and Jamie oh, would have Rush just come was, straight past. Sorry, Rush was getting very, very twitchy through Eau Rouge and that's going to definitely allow Baker a run. Down Cast. towards Lacombe, you would think. But he's not, just not in the slipstream there. Cats Cats side by his, side. Cats having his first look then at Wojciech Savinovic. Two laps to go here. Ooh. So Cats going around the outside. That's a very oh, brave brilliant. move. And he's got the inside line, but Savinovic will have the inside oh, line. They broke wheels. Hitting each other. Through the right-hander, Savinovic will have the inside line. Is he going to force Katz out wide? He does. Oh, look and now here comes Job. Sebastian Job. Whoa, he oh. has to get on the brakes there. And Sebastian Job, that was hold your breath stuff, and it's still not Katz, over. Katz, Katz around is, the outside. Yeah, he's still around the outside in Rivage, Adam, as this battle rages on into the corner with no name, down the hill. And, and Savinovic Whoa. just carries the momentum through, and he maintains the lead in fine style, Alex. That was a great little battle. Huge, um, huge battle that one. So important for the championship as well. That's, a bit, that's the, all, you know, the top three drivers you'd say in the series. There, I don't just, want to um, disrespect anyone, but I, I think these are the top five drivers in the series. Yep. All no, those you're right. Yep. 
there and um, that's look at that little battle all of a sudden Rushworth was 1.1 seconds at the start of that lap behind he's now oh. 0 0.2 make Joe. that make that zero yeah because he's just kissing <laughs> poor Seb there poor he's Cass did not get a good run through there did he <laughs> no um, Job had a fantastic run through the Spanish chicane Adam he really set him up extremely well and this is the last of it to scamper off a little bit it's 0 0.83 seconds now and um it's yeah. just how long is the slipstream effect here, Alex? What where what distance behind do you have to be for you to stop receiving any? Yeah, they were getting it from about 1.3, 1.5 seconds that lap, so I think um if you can break out to there he'll be okay, but seven tenths he's gonna um he's gonna get closed up down the main street. So coming round this time as we exit the bus stop, we're gonna see the white flag. It's gonna be one lap to go. Here at Spa Franca Shop, round 58 of the British Sim Racers Touring Car Championship with Engine Oils Direct. It's the Pro Series. It's the fight for $10,000. Remember, these guys sim races from all over the world, battling it out for huge cash prizes. And um, this definitely isn't a group of people sat on their armchairs with a controller in their hand, Alex. <laughs> no, quite, uh, quite the opposite. All sat in probably some sort of... Uh, racing cockpit, three screens around them, some of them with the Oculus Rift virtual reality headsets. You know, wheels can range from as much as a hundred pound up to several thousand, so huge uh, variety of equipment, but um, yeah, all of the drivers take it very, very seriously. Cat's trying to use that slipstream to catch up. Seb's not being able to get a run. That extra wicker, or a wing, just um, hampering him a little bit there. Savidovic won race one the last time we were here back in season six. I don't think the key is technical enough for Wicker, Alex. Well, you know, <laughs> at this point. <laughs> <laughs> what? Credit I think it? it's just I think they just bolt on a piece of plastic onto the back of it. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I don't quite. Well, well, credit to Katz. He's been able to use the slipstream down the Kemmel straight to close into Savidovic. And now he's within 0.5 of a second to try and do some damage through this, well, not literally, but through the final half of this, of this race. Down towards Puan, Sebastian Job has just got a little bit of an advantage over Jamie Rushworth as well. So let's see what Katz can do. He might have saved his tyres here as he head through the long left-hander at Puan. 0.4 of this lap remaining. What were the lap times? Uh, Savidovic was three tenths of a second quicker than Katz last time around, but I'm sure Katz is lapping the quicker at the moment. It's been a strange old race, Adam, hasn't it? Because sometimes it's looked like Savidovic is going to pull away and never see this lot again. And then soon he just gets reeled in within a couple of corners. It's very, very, um, it's very much ebb and flow at the front of this field and with just a couple of corners to go as they go through curve of Paul Frere. It's Wojciech Savidovic who's home free, it seems. Not completely over. He has to negotiate the bus stop. And he has to hit his breaking point and not make a mistake. Alex, so easy to do here. Yeah, this is going to be uh, so important, this final corner blanche one. Not easy as well. Seb's getting closer to uh, Katz. Will he be able to make a move into that bus stop? I don't know. He might have a try. These two these two do not Ooh. get on very well with each other. Sebastian John, I think it's suddenly nearly hits Savinovic. And he's going to go off the course. Oh, and he's he hits him. Hit Katz yet again. And Savinovic is going to take the win. Job and Katz hitting each other off the line. That's what's coming as well. Is he going to get the position on the line? And it's Baker got fourth. for Katz. Job Baker managed to sneak into P4 with Rush within fifth. And that was such an exciting finish. I don't think any of us saw that coming, Alex. And it's still going on out there. So many battles there as well. I'm just looking at um, Jake and um, um, Kip as well. They're just uh, two tenths of a second separating themselves in the last corner. There's a battle in front of them. That's Bro Strom and uh, I'm not sure who else that is there. Um, but yeah, everybody just funneling through right now as well. That's so. a battle for 22nd place between Paul Smith and Daniel Hunter of the bus stop chicane. And Paul Smith will just hold on and get 22nd place with the battle Daniel Hunter in 23rd. The battle for 32nd is heating up as well. Steve Burke oh, on into the final corner of the inside is uh, Dan Blake of Chaz Draco. Draco's gone wide, he's going to suffer now at the hands of Max Scheider. But it's, um, but it's Steve Walker who's going to come across. Is he going to beat Drake up to the line? That was very, very close indeed. And um, Yeah, Drake up 35th. It was Drake just by one tenth of a second. Scheider in 37th, Von Glan 38th, and Nick McCarran, Jay Wright, um, Ashley Blake Hood. They're still battling. <laughs> yeah, battle Charles, for 44th. Charles Sears, Charles Sears and Matt Bunn for uh, 45th, 45th sorry. and 46th, Alex. Let's watch these to the line. There'll be something going on here. There'll be a move. Gotta, gotta happen. Oh, he's, oh, he's oh, oh, in the right bit of blushing one there is Bun. 
and um, and Sears is going to come through here for friction. Danny inside into the bus stop. Sears on the inside. Oh no, right, he's going around the outside and he's got it done. So Charlie through, Sears. Bun, bun, bun with the cup. Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> in the back of Charles Sears. And what a finish that was for 45th place. My goodness me. This is fantastic. It was almost I like love a. It. It's like a soccer Saturday atmosphere there. Let's head down to the battle between <laughs> 45th and 46th. Well, Andrew Whitehead, he's in 47th place. Uh, he's just coming round to take uh, his 47th position after starting from the pit lane as Andreas Katz is coming round to return to the pits after the race. So Andrew Whitehead <laughs> through the final corner. He will get the chequered flag. And I think he is the last car on the lead lap as he comes across the line. Yeah, wow, what a, a race. He had a back of the grid, um, Alex and unfortunately got caught up in something else later on but uh goodness gracious me well i don't i don't know i think for the sake of motors tv i don't think we're gonna have time to run you through the classified results all 53 of them <laughs> uh we'll run you through the top 30 or so those are the cars that are eligible for the reverse grid Wojciech savinovich takes his 11th win of the season with andreas katz in second sebastian job in third after trying to get second place in the final corner. David Baker in fourth, Jamie Rushworth in fifth, Jamie Fluke in sixth, Stelian Czepilewski in seventh, Daniel Kraft in eighth, Alex Malensky in ninth, and Jerome Kaiser in tenth. Eleven. Sorry, can I just quickly stop you there, Adam? On yeah, the yeah, chat, sure. um, Dave Baker was so happy he wasn't sixth, Alex. Yeah. He was so pleased with his fourth place. Yeah. That, um, God bless him there. But... Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, the top ten. Um, your own Kaiser in the top ten. Very happy. With, uh, very happy to see that he's one of the um, league organisers as well. Sorry, Adam. Carry on. Yeah. I just wanted to yeah, point that out. It was so great. Yeah, that's fine. Let's <laughs> carry on. Graham Carroll in eleventh. Lee Thompson in twelfth. I think those two have had a battle the entire race. Colin Cunniff in thirteenth. Pete Newman in fourteenth. And then the cars eligible for re the reverse grid in race two. Linus Bostrom in fifteenth. Rob Fag sixteenth. Seventeenth. Kip Stevens. 18th, Jake Blackhall. 19th, Rusty Laidler. 20th, Stanimir Zuzov. 21st, Dustin Hickman. 22nd, Simon Field. After starting 43rd. 23rd, Paul Smith. Daniel Hunt. Uh, 24th from 46th. Robert Plumley, 25th. Robert Graham in 26th. Matt Walker, 27th. Lucas Doltzer in 28th. Andrew Brown in 29th. And then in 30th, it's Julian Janowski. And in the cars, there were one or more laps down. Brian Blackford in 48th, Neil Bamber 49th, Lee Berridge in 50th, Steve Hefford 51st, Kevin Noon 52nd, and Steve Richardson, I don't think, took the start. No, he did. He, he got, um, got disconnected fairly early. Yeah, Sorry, he, did, he got yeah. disconnected fairly early on, Adam. So uh, Richardson was, was in there, but he uh, fortunately left to start from the back for race two. Um, Alex, what do you make of that then? Spa, it, it was a good race. Um, most most certainly but the finish was just fantastic what a great finish actually great battling all round I mean for for the most part I didn't see any dubious moves or anything like that in that race uh, normally normally there's some sort of yeah. um, bumping and banging and whatnot. it's great to see let's hope we see exactly the same um, in the second uh, the second race because just what an exhibition those guys have just uh, put on for us out there the and, desperation, Adam, and Sebastian yeah. Job there in the final corner to try and get past Katz. He nearly wiped out Savinovich, didn't he? Alex, I don't know if you can have a look at that, actually, while Adam goes goes through it, I guess. Uh, well, yeah, Sebastian Job. Um, the poor guy started on pole position, and I think he was trying to get some consolation from this race. And lunging down the inside of Katz into the final corner, it looked like a viable move, but there was just, unfortunately, not enough track in the bus stop chicane for him to get that move done. But... The top five battling with two laps to go, side by side, Andreas Katz and Savidovic through Lacom, through Ravage, through turn seven, and almost side by side into Puon as well. That sequence of corners on, on the penultimate lap, one of the highlights of the season as well, with Rushworth and Baker battling with them as well. Uh, let's like, have a look. Let's have a look then at the final lap of the race. Uh, just trying to um, get I was it up just on gonna, screen now. I'm going to say, boys, if you look at uh, Wojciech as he turns into the corner. You can see he turns into the corner normally and then completely messes himself when he see, he looks in his mirror and sees an apex car flying towards him. Yeah, and he takes immediately f to go to the outside line to, to avoid being hit. And um, If you look at it from his gearbox camera... Give us see a second, gents. Sorry, yeah. I've got um, just the admins obviously want us to do the, um, Reverse do the Wheel of Fortune. So let's do that and then we will, oh, um, we'll no review... Fun. We'll review that replay yeah. straight after that. No fun at all. <laughs> so, so Plumley, Graham, Plumley, Graham, Walker, Dolce, Brown, Janowski, Robert. Yeah. Sorry, I'm looking at completely the wrong. Yeah, I am looking at the right positions. 
So 15th, sorry, Bostrom, Fag, Stevens, Blackhall, Layla, Zuzov, Hickman, Field, Smith, Hunt, Plumley, and Graham. Those are the cars eligible for the reverse grid, Alex. Who's going to get it? Let's see. Just the one spin. Ah, I didn't bring any music this week. Going to be... Oh, Oh, it's a fairly straightforward 25th, I think. Is it going to get... Oh, it could go. No, it's not. 25th. Oh, look at how close that is. Whoever <laughs> was 17th will be absolutely shouting Kip on the screen Stevens. right now. It was, it, just... was, it was Kip Stevens. So I, I... <laughs> and that shows you right there that this league is not... A con- this this Wheel of Fortune is not a conspiracy if the, <laughs> if the race organisers don't end up on pole position. So that will put, actually, 25th. Robert Plumley onto pole position with Dan Hunt on sec- with second place on the grid after starting from 46th Paul Smith in 3rd Simon Field in 4th and Dustin Hickman in 5th so we've got two big names there in Daniel Hunt and Simon Field Andrew yes indeed and they're very very high up and uh, Paul Smith as well who's leading the AM category and Paul Robert Plumley in um, well he's definitely leading the AM category now because he's defeated John Roberts in this race so just having a look at this replay um, so yes it yeah. actually kicked in on its own I guess the server must have ended so it just went play um, but yes, yes. yes, just having a little late look at the inside there. You're right, he was close, but Svidovic's there was enough, gearbox. There was enough room from Svidovic, and then yeah. of course um, he had to turn into the left there. But Katz just chopped his nose off, but uh, wasn't having any of it, and uh, manages to hold on to second. And Sevac just by the skin of his teeth got third from um, from Baker. It was very fair between those two in the end. It was, you, you know, it was it was good in the first um, the first part of the chicane at least, but. Uh, and I guess Alex that's where triple screens probably helps uh, Andreas Katz I believe he does run them yeah we know Seb's only on a single monitor as well he would have been able to see Job coming wouldn't he yeah yeah exactly and the thing I think for Job is the fact that he he had to rejoin in that position unfortunately he couldn't have gone through the inside of that curve otherwise he would have picked up a slowdown and not very much room to take that slowdown before the start finish line so that contact with Katz sadly inevitable there yeah, Rushworth tried to um, get past Job at the end, but he found his path blocked, and that's how Baker, he had to actually hit the brakes, and that's how Baker, um, Baker snuck in for P4 there, so Dave will be very happy with that, I think started fourth, finished fourth, um, let's see who the biggest mover was through the field, I've got a feeling it was uh, Simon Field, no, Simon Field 21 places, Dan Hunt 22 places, uh, John Roberts actually went up 20 places from his 51st on the grid. Good grid. First on the grid. And um, I can't even imagine starting 51st, uh, Adam, in the race. No. There's so much work to do during that race. And Simon Field, the fact that he managed to overtake 21 cars and Daniel Hunt 22 cars in the 10 laps that we get given is quite an achievement. Um, yeah, great job from them. And uh, for Daniel Hunt and Simon Field, their work plays dividends, really, with the reverse grid working in their favour. So they'll be right at the front this time uh, when they go down to the green flag. Yeah, and that's about the best you can hope for, isn't it, Alex, when you get a back-of-the-grid penalties to fight your way up to the reverse grid and and um, all credit to them because this was one of the harder races to fight your way up through. Yeah, I think they were all kicking themselves, actually, when they saw the um, the entry list and thought, oh, what, it's not just a 40-car a grid, you know, there's an extra 15 cars out there they're going to have to try and navigate around. And But yeah, some of the drivers did a great job and those that are, were just outside the top 25, you expect them to be in there for um, for the next round, for sure. That's how fantastic the BSRTC Pro Series is. 15 cars is a whole grid for some series, and we have 53 here in Belgium tonight. Um, Thanks very much for joining us for the first race, and don't go anywhere because after this break, we will see race two from Spa-Francorchamps. Don't go anywhere.
Simulated racing can be awesome, but can also be kind of a free-for-all. Interestingly, auto racing faced the same problem in its earlier days. Whether it was on the back roads, the beaches, or the city streets, the racing was fun. But there was always a certain level of chaos and danger, until some folks came along and put some order to all of this. Stuff like official racetracks, regulations about weight and equipment, and enforcement of standards. That's what gave us high-speed excitement, fast-paced action, and photo finishes. That's when racing became racing. The guys over at iRacing.com have made the same transformation in the world of sim racing. Sure, they've got the most accurate tracks and realistic cars out there, but that's just the start. See, iRacing analyzes the performance and results of each driver in every race. So you can be sure you're always placed in races where the competition will be tight. And that those reckless drivers who ruin it for us all are kept in the pits. Not to mention that with over 45,000 active members already in their vast community, you can find races day and night. So you can always get in on the action. You can even join a league of your favorite series. And since updates are always automatic, you don't have to worry about software and can focus on the track. Zip up your fire suit and check out iRacing.com.
Simulated racing can be awesome, but can also be kind of a free-for-all. Interestingly, auto racing faced the same problem in its earlier days. Whether it was on the back roads, the beaches, or the city streets, the racing was fun. But there was always a certain level of chaos and danger, until some folks came along and put some order to all of this. Stuff like official racetracks, regulations about weight and equipment, and enforcement of standards. That's what gave us high-speed excitement, fast-paced action, and photo finishes. That's when racing became racing. The guys over at iRacing.com have made the same transformation in the world of sim racing. Sure, they've got the most accurate tracks and realistic cars out there, but that's just the start. See, iRacing analyzes the performance and results of each driver in every race. So you can be sure you're always placed in races where the competition will be tight. And that those reckless drivers who ruin it for us all are kept in the pits. Not to mention that with over 45,000 active members already in their vast community, you can find races day and night. So you can always get in on the action. You can even join a league of your favorite series. And since updates are always automatic, you don't have to worry about software and can focus on the track. Zip up your fire suit and check out iRacing.com. Welcome back to the BSR Touring Car Pro Series here on Motors TV and live on YouTube as well. Uh, I'm Andrew Woodhouse alongside Adam Bath and Alex Simpson. Race 2 here at Spa. We had a cracking finish to race 1 and Adam, this one should be great and we have a very interesting top 10 as well. Yeah, once again, 53 cars will be taken to the track. Let's run you through the starting lineup then for the second race of the evening. 25 cars reversed. That means Robert Plumley is on pole position with Daniel Hunt alongside him, with Paul Smith in third, Simon Fields in fourth. Daniel Hunt and Simon Fields but both working their way up from the 40, 40th places on the grid. Then in fifth place, it is Dustin Hickman with Stanimir Zuzov in sixth. Russell Layla in seventh with Jake Blackhall in eighth. So Kip Stevens is in 9th with Robert Fagg in 10th, 11th Linus Bostrom, 12th Pete Newman, 13th Colin Cuniff, Lee Thompson 14th, Graham Carroll 15th, Sharon Kaiser in 16th, 17th Alex Malensky, 18th Daniel Kraft, and then rounding out the top 20 it's Delian Chepilevsky and Jamie Fluke. Thanks very much Adam. Alex, hello again mate. Um, what are you expecting from this one then? Because the first race was really good. We usually have a bit of chaos in race 2 don't we? Yeah, and just looking at the um, temperature that was up on screen, it looks a little bit cooler as well. So, tyres might be a little bit greasy on the rear. The um, the rolling start, of course, will help that a little bit. But um, those tyres that are wearing out perhaps a little bit during that race should be uh, less of a factor as well. So, um, we could see some really, really hard battling going on for the whole race this time. Yeah, just Not that it wasn't anyway. <laughs> no, no, it was indeed. I mean, we had 48th and 49th fighting against each other, didn't we, at the end? But... Uh, we, um, the reason for the rolling start is because Akira is quite tricky on cold tyres. 
don't want a big pile up through our roots, which is one of the, especially in the high speed corners, the case struggles on lap one. So, just a bit of caution exercise by the race organisers. And um, Adam, what can we expect here with Robert Plumley on pole position? He's alongside his teammate. Uh, well, Paul Smith's not far behind him actually. Well, if we saw the slipstreaming be a huge benefit at Watkins Glen, I think it's going to be even more important here and that means we're going to see the packs not breaking up as quickly as we've seen in previous race meetings and with the reverse grid jumbling up the pack as it always does it's just going to be so much better than race one I think we've got the likes of Chepilevsky, Rushworth, Job and Zavidovic down in the 23rd, 24th and 25th placings on the grid they're going to have to work their way up right from the middle of the pack they've got nowhere to hide going into Eau Rouge and then you've got the guys at the front the likes of Daniel Hunt he's already took a race win this season uh, Russell Laidler as well uh, Kip Stevens in 7th those guys all all Jake good Blackhall. Race. Jake Blackhall as well yeah took a race victory for Apex Racing TV at uh, Watkins Glen a few weeks ago so many drivers that are capable of taking race wins at the front of the pack and in the midfield as well so they're going to be moving their way through the pack and those guys are going to be battling it out at the front as well and who knows maybe in the final few laps they could all be joined right at the front for an epic final showdown There'll be a, a race winner starting from the very back as well. Steve Walker has got a, a back of the grid penalty for this one. Um, Alex, something tells me that maybe the most unsafe thing about this race could be the fact that Sebastian Job and Andreas Katz are starting next to each other. Yeah, they seem to uh, be rubbing um, bodywork no matter where they are on the um, on the grids this season, especially the last four or five races. So. Um, yeah, let's see how this one uh, goes. Have they decided to go now. It's probably it's probably yeah, decided to really, really decided really to early. hit it. It's good to cause no some trouble. It. As some guys near the back, yeah, they, they are overtaking as well, and they'll get black flags potentially if they do green, green, green passes green. before the green flag, and it flies now. Well, Daniel Hunt's already up into oh, second. Yeah, as we head yeah. through Rouge, it's those two breaking away already for Eau Rouge. This Ooh. could be what Daniel Hunt wanted. Through Eau Rouge, he gets a fantastic run. Let's see what Robert Plumley can do. Is he is he going to put up a defence already on lap number one as we head down to Lacombe? He's on the outside. He's not moving over yet. Daniel Hunt looking to the inside in the background. Russell Laidler trying to get past me, uh, Jake Blackhall as well. Rob Fagg again with the slowdown. Daniel Hunt takes the lead into Lacombe, but will Plumley try and hang it out around the outside? He yes, does. he will. Fantastic job from Blumley. He nudges Hunt wide a bit like Savinovic and Katz in race one. Blumley's still going around the outside as we head down to Rivage, Andrew. Round the outside of Malmody, and that's very, very difficult to do. Into Rivage, Plumley very late on the brakes. He's experienced now in wow. this series, and a brilliant move from Plumley, Alex. Excellent. Yeah, great, great move to um, to hold that round there. Uh, he, he must have thought it was, his lead was gone. And he makes a great pass there. Is, um, is everyone through okay at the back? Um, we just need to see Steve Richardson. Yes, he's he's still he's going okay. Um, Berridge. Oh, Berridge hitting Steve Walker. So Walker's trying to come through. Kev New, Laura Bond, Brian Blackford. Yep, everyone seems to be Whoa. okay. Cats up, Laidler, sorry, out of control. He got hit by Blackhall going through uh, the Fania chicane, and now he's under pressure from Pete Newman as Simon Field is off in the background into the gravel. Oh, he's back on field, just ahead of Jamie Fluke. He's got your own Kaiser somewhere near him as well. He's down to about 14th place, it's 15th. It could be 16th <laughs> for Simon Field now. Uh, I, remember, I remember last time we were here back in season six, Andrew, a quote that really sticks with me. Simon Field involved in a huge incident. I think Field ended up in the field, was something he said last something time. Something like we were that. Here. I mean, that's where, he's, you know, that's where he ended up. He doesn't want to end up there again. As, oh! Of course, oh. Jake Blacko. No, no, it's not. Thompson. It's, Thompson. Thompson. Almost did a Luciano Berti on it from a few years ago in Formula One. and uh, he just hit off the track there. Big incident. Let's see what happened. Quarter oh. panels by Kip Stevens. And was it Brostrom as well that was there? Did Brostrom get a touch on him? Alex, I don't know if you've got... Uh, Just looking at it now. No, he did play. There's no one yeah. in there. Side by side, going through, um, yeah, through Blanchemont. Both drivers turn in, just a little tag on the um, on the rear there and that's just the front wheel drive. In, um, getting getting turned on the rear there, just, um, yeah. Got to be so, so careful when you go side by side there and unfortunately Lee was... Um, oh, what's going oh, on up front? Battle to the lead, yeah. 
Here comes Daniel Hunt then. He looks to the inside. I don't think he's a, he's having a look. He's having a look. He's down the inside. Didn't work Who's last time. It looks... Oh, no. Plumlee's going to hang it around the outside again. But I think Hunt has got a bit more of an overlap this time around. They both oh, the no, wheels again. The same thing again. It's, it's a carbon copy. Plumlee's trying to hang around the outside. Hunt's thinking, not this time, fella. As um, he has to come to the inside now to defend into Rivage Hairpin. Whoa. And Plumlee and Marilea on the brakes. They hit each other. Robert Plumlee putting up a wonderful defence of his lead. And which is now over. Well, Dustin Hickman is a newcomer to the championship and he can't believe what's going on in front of him here. He's now going to be right on the back of Robert Plumley as we head into Puan for the second time. Daniel Hunt to the lead, though. Hickman in the Deutsche Post entry. Um, Alex, that was impressive from Robert Plumley, wasn't it? Hanging on for so long. Yeah, he doesn't want to give this up either as well. Um, it's hard to tell between him and Dustin right now as they're both showing us uh, white on the screen, but Rob still in second place, Dustin in third. Rusty Laidler coming under pressure from Jake Blackall for Apex Racing TV. Blackall wasn't the one who came and got for it at Blanchimol, but um, he's now chasing after Laidler in the GT Omega car. And we've got Engine All Direct battling with uh, Friction. That is Graham Carroll fighting away with Linus Bosham as they head through Blanchimol. This is the battle for 6th uh, and 7th, on the 7th and 8th, sorry on the racetrack. Carroll just looks to the inside a bit there through Blanchemont, but let's see if he can get a run into the bus stop, Andrew. Yeah, it looks like he can. And the Scotsman is going to the outside, which will become the inside for the second part of the chicane if he can if he can keep it. Oh, oh low engine for engine. Blackall. And that's Australia his race over. Is out of the running. And he's not going to make it back to his pit lane, Alex. No chance, not from there. Won't be long to um, get it towed back, mind you. So he should be um, back out on the uh, on the lead lap. Well, Hump pit lane, the he's just lap. in the box. As look at this stuff behind the Kaiser, Kaiser and Chepilevsky and Joe and Smidovich and Katz are all together now, Whoa. and they're all nearly hitting each other. Off goes Joe. Oh, there's something oh, going there's on. Oh, there's a crash behind. Yep. And that was uh, some blue car in the walls. Three wide, heading into Eau Rouge. Kaiser, Joe. And who's that on the right-hand side? Is that Katz as well? They all sort each other out. It's now Kaiser leading them through with Job in 17th position and Katz in 18th with Savidovic chasing him behind as they head down towards Lake Hop. Yeah, it was um, Andrew Brown who was in a bit of trouble. And look at this in front of them as well with Kraft, Newman and, uh, and Baker. Stevens. Cuniff side by side with Field. And there's Dave Baker, as you said. Season uh, seven champion. Now we're going to be feel for getting very close to the back of the friction car of um, Colin Cuniff and Baker looking into Rivage, but he's not quite there. Got a great drive there through Rivage and nearly managed to get past all, but Field lunges it back down the inside. A fantastic opportunistic move, but he's going to run wide on the exit. And who's that in the number 49 car? That is uh, Jamie Fluke trying to get in the action as well. Hunt, uh, Baker down the inside into Puon. Oh, Can Field. Field hanging out around the outside this time? Ah, you haven't really got a chance in the middle part of Puon to keep it. Um, Simon Field gets out muscled by Dave Baker. Baker up into 12th position. And then um, look at this scrap, Alex, then involving the championship contenders, Savinovich, Joe, Rushworth. And then it's Smolensky with, um, who's that number? I've got a white car there, it's Robert Fag, I believe. It's Fag, I think. Oh, it's Fag, sorry, it is Fag. Yeah, side by side through Stavolo and Ooh. Fag is just able to cut across in front of Smolensky. Uh, up at the front as well, Russell Leyland has managed to get past Paul Smith. He's into fourth position on the racetrack and Smith is under pressure now from Graham Carroll as they head through into the bus stop chicane. Smith holding his inside line. Can Carroll try and get that outside move done like he did a lap ago? He just swoops past the Stemson racing car and now Graham Carroll is inside the top five. By the way, um, Alex Plumley is extremely close still to Dan Hunt. He has not let this go, as, as you mentioned, he, as you thought he wouldn't. No, I don't think there's just no chance. Hunt puts the fastest lap in once again, so he's definitely quick out there. Um, but um, yeah, Plumley just sticking with half a um, half a second behind, one tenth slower that lap. He's going to have to use the slipstream down this Kemmel Street through Eau Rouge. Make sure oh. that he can um, just claw that back, and he already has gained two tenths of a second. Paul Smith down to sixth, he's behind Graham Carroll 
and Russell Edlin now. Andres Katz ahead of your own Kaiser into 15th place. Robert Plumley could be just play, playing a waiting game. We've still just got six laps to go in this race. I uh, haven't even got to the halfway mark this. yet. Look at this in the middle of the pack. Uh, Adam Stephen, uh, Kraft Stevens, Newman, Cuniff side by side with Baker. Cuniff and Baker have been battling the last few laps, still side by side. But oh, oh, he turns him around. Off, He's going to be facing the pack. And who, did, who was the Power Max guy? He hit Jamie Fluke. By fit, and Savinovic has to take evasive action as well. Savinovic managed to rejoin in front of Kaiser with very little damage. I don't, I don't think he hit anything really, but he's rejoined in 15th place. And Jamie Fluke bearing the brunt of that incident between Cuniff and Baker. Savinovic yeah, was... actually has some left front damage there as well. We'll see how that affects him. He's got Kaiser awesome. behind him, but um, yeah, he's certainly got some damage from it. He's got some slight damage to the rear wing as well. I don't know if he slightly clipped the wall as Kaiser now defending from Job as Job pushes the Dutchman wide in Puon. But Kaiser's trying to stay on the inside into the oh. finish again. He just hits him. And Rushworth gets through just. That, one, that was really interesting, that one. I think, to be fair, going through Puon, Sebastian Job was roughing Kaiser up a bit. Yeah, he was. And um, that's the thing is that you, you can't really can't really do that constantly you know intimidating another car and uh, Hunt and Pumley have now broken away Dustin Hickman a very impressive third um, Alex what do you make of his performance yeah great performance I'm just uh, guided for uh, Dustin that I haven't been able to show his livery all um, for the last two races for whatever reason this is just not showing up at all which is uh, yeah sorry about that uh, Dustin but what a great job that he's doing out there he looks quite comfortable in uh, third place I mean he has got Graham Carroll closing on him we know how quick Carroll is and uh, he's just outside the uh, slipstream zone now though Dustin so he might be a little bit vulnerable this time he's got um, Laidler um, tucked up behind Carroll as well and Smith not too far behind him and then behind Smith is um, Linus Brostrom, Adam, who's racing in the series for quite a long time now. Yeah, Linus Brostrom, part of the... Oh, movie three wide in turn one. Sorry, guys, I just <laughs> flipped the screen over. Sebastian Job, Alex Malensky, is it? I don't know. Yeah, I think um, it might be. Yeah, and Zuzov were in there. They've uh, managed to get through it, no problems. But, yeah, just caught a little glimpse of it. Smolensky's going backwards, which is a very rare thing to see. He's down to 20th place now. And he may be under threat from uh, the Bulgarian, the fellow Bulgarian Zuzov. Yes, Zuzov all over the place there going through. Uh, Radion and Uptale coming just in the foreground there, side by side between Jamie Rushworth and number 28. That is Rob Fag. Rob Fag, a winner. Watkins Glen a few weeks ago. And Rushworth. Oh, Zuzov across. around the outside of Smolensky as well, Adam. Yeah, two great battles unfolding here. And Kaiser battling with Sebastian Job. These two made contact a lap ago. Will there be a repaying the favour? Kaiser sensibly gets out of the way and allows Sebastian Job through. Yeah, and it's um, it's probably a good thing that that happened. As Zuzov still around the outside of Smolensky through reverse. Can he get up the inside into the corner with no name? No, he can't. Um, Alex Stanomir Zuzov, we know he's a good driver. He's had a terrible part of the mid season. Um, he just doesn't seem to have done anything, but uh, this is good to see him up here at the spa Franca shop. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, start of the season, he was the safest driver as far as the um, sort of the clean award goes as well. Remember, there's prize money for the cleanest driver in the championship as well. And uh, he was there, but like you say, he's just had a bit of a mare in the middle. And hopefully maybe this will be a um, kickstart his season. I mean, still down in 21st place, but um, it's only 17 seconds behind the leader at this point. So could still pick up a few places but he, ha he hasn't just it's almost like Adam he's just not even be able to get any good reverse grids either or anything like that really. it's Alice Malensky no Zuzov oh, sorry yeah Zuzov yeah I think I remember him having a good position at, at Twin Rim Motegi a few months ago uh, but ever since then I haven't really seen him up at the front and 21st position that's right in the usual positions we see the reverse grid happening so uh, hopefully he stays in that position not just get involved in too much contact so he could have a, a, a respectable third and final race of the evening. A man on the move at the moment, though, is Andreas Katz. He's up into 14th position. And at the same time, Rob Fack and Sebastian Job are battling. They're changing positions left, right, um, every few seconds or so. And there's a bit of contact at the exit of the bus stop. They're closing in on Jamie Rushworth in front of them. And uh, Job looking down the inside. And Fag closes the door right in his face there. Take that, Sebastian Job on the exit of La Source. And as they head down to Eau Rouge, Job could be under pressure once again from Jerome Kaiser. Just um, 
a note about Real Fowler. He started 43rd and then he ended up, he, he was running really, really well, but he's had a bad couple of laps. Finds himself down now in 42nd place behind Steve Heffer. So I don't know what's happened to, oh, goodness me, he's hitting. Um, he's hitting Heffer through the, through La Source. Don't know what's happened to the NASCAR peak antifreeze champion, uh, Alex, but uh, he's had a bit of a nightmare there. Yeah, no, just looking at the lap time, 2 minute 50 that last time by. So, yeah, definitely uh, any damage or anything. Yeah, definitely some problems out there. His teammates doing uh, having a much better race. So he started 48, he's now 36 Brian Blackford. And he's battling with he's just behind the carnage car of Lee Berridge, Adam. Uh, yeah, Lee Berridge Ooh. currently sitting in 35th position on the racetrack at the moment. Oh, cars battling all the way through the racetrack here. Uh, Blind Blackford, yeah, in 36th position with a Steve Richardson behind. Steve Richardson had a disconnection early on in race one. He's still in 37th position, working their way through Rivage. Very close there between uh, Blackford and Berridge as they head through left hand. Uh, Blackford gets a bit sideways and uh, Berridge goes off as well. So this just allows them to close up even more. And Richardson looking down the inside as they head into Puon. Yeah, Blackford. I think he thought about having a look into Puon, but he may be able to get a good run out of there and into the Fania Shikim. We've seen some moves done there. Today, is he, he's always very close to hitting Berridge. And is he going to have a look into the Chicane? Blackford knows he needs to get a move on. Doesn't do anything as of yet, but Berridge goes a tiny bit wide. Look, it's a great scrap, this, um, Alex. And the man at the front of the field is 35th. Yeah, just uh, crazy, really. <laughs> so. But uh, yeah, just looking, uh, Andrew Whitehead's closing in on uh, Robert Graham just behind them as well. Nick McGarren's not too far behind, so yeah, good little battle. But then uh, 2.8 seconds back, Steve Hefford. So uh, I think Steve, if he carries on, will close that gap up as well. Good battle as between uh, Kip Stevens and David Baker going into the source. Those two are side by side as they head on the exit. Stevens in the Power Max car, of course, took a race victory at Laguna Seca the last time we were on Motors TV. Motors TV Tuesday, 5.20, mid-Ohio as well. Make sure you tune in for that as Stevens right, and Baker go. go side by side. And the move is done. So Stem Sim Racing driver David Baker, season seven champion, up into a ninth oh. position. Oh, someone, it's a car in the wall. Yeah, someone's in the wall. Not Steve sure who Walker, I think. Uh, could be Lucas. Steve Walker, yeah. Steve Walker it is in the Which wall. Steve? He's on the X. Is he on? It happens. Is it a Vol Rouge? I don't know what happens. He slows down. Oh, he's just come out of the pits. He slows down and then he turns the car or tries to park it. I don't know. Well, yeah. we won't worry about replaying that one. <laughs> well, yeah, no, he, we won't. No. Yeah, he, he parks the car and then the iRacing system kindly flips him over and sticks him in the wall. We just assumed that he was, yeah, he was crashing, unfortunately. Sorry, Steve. But um, whatever it is, it's not good for Steve Walker. So Dustin Hickman uh, has now been taken, actually, by Graham Carroll and Russell Laidler. So Laidler up to fourth, Carroll up to third, and Hickman down into fifth place. Yeah, Hickman still inside the top Ooh. five, though, so good job from him. Katz is up to 11th place. Uh, yeah, 12th place, oh, sorry. Smith, oh, Smith's gone off at Puon. Sorry, Alex. Yeah, no, just about to say exactly the same thing. Broached around the outside in the engine oil direct car. It's going to have the uh, high line here. Yeah, straight through. That's good. And just to hold it around the outside there. He always had the advantage on the left hander there. Great driving there from uh, Brostrom. Yep. Yeah, as, as we were saying a few moments ago before we had all these battles, Brostrom part of the winning team in season four, Movie Go Racing. And uh, he hasn't been in the championship really since season six when he raced for Lugnut. So good to see him back in the championship and inside uh, the top ten. And if he just gets past uh, Hickman, he could be into the top five. But Hickman, though, is Cats. fighting back. He's fighting with Russell Layla as they head through Blanchelon. Yeah, he's, he's, he's almost within reach of a move, but we've got a battle between Kip Stevens and Andreas Katz which might take the precedent over that field is there as well yeah but we've wow. almost got three wide into the breaking area for, for the bus stop we have indeed field trying to go around the outside i wonder if he's trying to get a pull <laughs> pass done on andreas katz but um katz gets a great cut back on stevens he's going to have to hold the inside as they head towards la source the drivers are as they start lap nine the drivers are one season one two and three battling it out here into the source, Katz round the outside of Stevens. Stevens will have the inside line on the exit, but Katz might have the superior straight line speed and he's through. So Andreas Katz's comeback continues. He's up into 11th position and it's the next car in front of him is going to be Jamie Fluke. Fields up to 13th. 
So that's good for, for Simon. It looks like um, uh, have we lost a couple of cars? Let me just see. Ashley Blake could have been in the walls somewhere down there. Yeah, it looks like it. Um, way down in 42nd place. I see him dropping down the timing screens actually. Heffern's just on board got ahead with, of um, Julian Janowski as well. He's closing in on Chaz Draycott, who in turn is closing in on Steve Burke. So, good little um, battle. There's um, a battle just ahead of them as well. Zuzov. And Smolensky. Um, yeah, and Smolensky. They were side by side going into Lacoum. Nothing going there. Sorry, this is lap 8, not lap 9 that I that it was incorrectly but Burke and Draycott and Janowski um, Chaz Draycott first race for Leo Bodner it's pretty nerve wracking uh, Alex first race for a, a new team and he's uh, acquitting himself well yeah doing a great job out there and um, yeah like you say you don't really want your first race to be when there's another 55 cars on the uh, on the grid but uh, oh. yeah doing a great job 23rd place at the moment Closed in on um, Steve Burke. We know how good Steve Burke is as well. He's always in the action. I will give Chaz a bit of a shout as well. He does organise the BSR Kia Club Series, which is the, if you like, second tier league that, that's going at the moment. A couple of drivers from that have joined us for uh, today. Matt Bunn and uh, I've lost uh, Neil Bamber as well, who I believe is part of that league as well. And Hunt puts another fastest lap in, 2 minute 29. So getting a little bit quicker 2.0 three tenths faster Plumley still trying to hold on uh, to that gap and looking at the timing screen while we continue to watch this battle between Draycott and Burke Carroll's looking quick though Adam through the bus stop he had a great run Plumley's got oh. to slow down I do believe uh, he's, he's, no, 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 uh, not. yeah he's just moving over I think to disturb the slipstream we're gonna get we've got two laps to go in this race but Plumley runs wide I think and Plumley's tyres are shot because he just can't turn in, can he, Alex? No, I think no, yeah. struggling there. I'm just hearing word actually. Lucas, um, Lucas Dozer there just had a um, had a blue screen, so he oh got dear. kicked out of the um, sim exactly the same time as uh, Steve Walker was going. I uh, mean, these little shenanigans at the top of Oru, so that's why I thought it was potentially Lucas. This is a horrible day, Adam, for John Roberts in the AM category. He's down in 48th place, and his rival Paul Smith is up in ninth. Yeah, not good as for, uh, for John Roberts battling away with Scott Malcolm here in the battle for 47th place on the racetrack. <laughs> Stelian Cepalevsky up in front in, 40, in 46th. So uh, he started 19th place on the grid. So he might have had a bit of issue uh, at the start of the race. Especially oh, going sorry guys. Great battle going on right now. Steve Richardson, Lee Berridge, Brian Blackford almost three wide through turn one. We're going to certainly have some two wide maybe through where Rouge Richardson having a little look. He wants to get Berridge. What's Brian going to do? He's sat behind. Oh, he's going to take full commitment through a Rouge. That's, that's my boy. Up the, over the hill of Radion. And he's he overtaken Berridge, as well. Berridge already. That's fantastic and from Blackford through a Rouge. And I think Berridge has got such a poor run. He's now going to be under pressure from Kev Noon. And Noon down the inside. Through. And he's through. Yeah, Noon's through. And then it's Whitehead just behind. And then it's McCarran. We're carrying under pressure from Graham. Is Graham going to take the position into Lacoum? Oh, well, McCarran oh. decides to um, give him a little bit of nudge on the way in. And there's um, Hefford and there's Alfala. So those guys not out of, well, they're out of contention, I guess, for reverse grid, but Bat still battling hard. Battles inside the top 10. We've got Paul Smith and Andreas Katz battling. Katz through now into 10th uh, position. 10, yep. And Stevens battling with Field, and at the same time, Pete Newman was battling with Wojciech Savinovic. And uh, look how close Field and uh, Stevens are as they head through Stavolo and down towards Blanchemont. We mentioned this the quality of this field, Alex, on a weekly basis. We're like a broken record, but you can see it here in the fact that Savinovic, Joe, Rushworth haven't surged through, have they? No, they've really struggled. Um, 15th is about it. I mean, um, Svidovic closing in a little bit, but um, Rushworth hasn't been able to make any real ground and Sib's just sort of um, following him as um, Field Joel. has a little look around the outside of uh, Stevens, got the cut back, so they're going to be side by side coming out of the bus stop. Job's just taken Rushworth, Alex, at the bus stop chicane. Field, is he going to have a look on Stevens? Look at this battle in front, that's the one that we need to look at really. It's Russell Laidler in fourth, fifth Dustin Hickman, then Dancraft in sixth, seventh Baker, eighth Brosh from ninth Blue, then it's Katz in tenth and Smith in eleventh. 
Baker, who finished fourth in race one, so he's done a fantastic job to get up to seventh place in this race with a very clean car. Let's see if we can get a run on Daniel Kraft through, through Eau Rouge and up to Les Combe. We're on the final lap of the race here in the second race of the evening here at Spa Francorchamps. No moves happening yet. Kraft looks to the inside of Hickman, but I think Hickman's got just enough in the balance to, so he can maintain his top five place at the moment. Yeah, that Dodge Post car looks like he's got good straight line speed, but he's under a lot of pressure now from Dan Kraft. The lead at the front is down to 1.05 seconds. So there's still a chance for Graham Carroll. Oh, crash, and it involves Kip Stevens. Kip Stevens is off, and he's going to come back on in front of Sebastian Job, who's managed to get past Savidovic. Job down the inside, oh, yeah. past Stevens, and Savidovic should follow suit as well. But It, it yeah. was with Field, Adam, that Stevens had a bit of a contact with. And let's see if he'll move out the way and let his teammate Jamie Rushworth through. Just going to take a quick look at that back on replay before the uh, end of this race. Oh, we just caught the tail end of it, yeah, through Lacombe. A little bit of, um, oh, just a little tag on the rear there. Got put into the wall. It's going to survive, I think, but um, it's going to slow him down. He's got a fair bit of damage. We'll jump back live. It's Daniel Hunt that we need to focus on now as he's coming through curve Paul Frere for the last time. His lead has been cut. It was 1.2. It's now 0.75. As they coming up towards the bus stop, he should be fine, Daniel Hunt. We've said this before, it doesn't always go smoothly when you're in the lead on the final lap. It's the worst time to be in that position. Oh, is he sliding into Blanchemont? Oh, goes off, off in a big way. And as, is, as is Carroll. Yeah, I think Carroll really just followed him off. He's got the gap down to six tenths of a second. Hard on the brakes into the final chicane. Look out, oh, he's right with him. No, he's, he's going to go this side. Oh, the Hunt's hit the curve. And he's going to survive and he's going to take a win. A second Brilliant win. win for Dan Hunt just ahead of Carroll. Uh, Graham Carroll gave everything there, Alex, at the end. And they're still going off through the bus stop. Baker and uh, Baker and Brostrom and Fluke crashing into each other a little bit there. Yeah, everybody's delighted to get through that one. Um, this looks Ooh, quite Joe, close between Newman. Yeah, Newman and Joe. That's nah, Newman's one. Newman's got that one. That's all, that's all between um, Stephen Burke and... Oh, uh, before, yeah, Drake got as well, yep. Oh, the final Drake corner. trying to get a cut back. That's going to be a drag race to the start-finish line. Who's going to get that one? Stephen Burke just. Stephen Burke will get 22nd, Drake got for 23rd. Right, let's look. Neil let's Bamber look as well, six tenths back. Uh, there's a good one between Kevin Noon, Whitehead and Steve Hefford there. Oh, there, actually, there's a few cars in front of them. That's ridiculously close, but oh, no one goes. looks like they're um, battling out there. They're going to Berridge come through. Oh, who's gone wide? Berridge. And that's going to allow Noon to get through. They were, were, were door panels on the exit. Kev Noon will get through and claim 33rd position. Berridge 34th, Whitehead 35th, Hefford 36th. And then our Fowler in 37th, then Janowski. And they're still battling on the... Um, well, that's pretty much <laughs> that's pretty much it for the battles, I think. Well, well so, no, not entirely. 47 from 48, oh, Scott Malcolm go. and John Roberts. They're um, just going through... Where are they? They've just come out of poo on at the moment. So oh, goodness. They've got a little while to go, so we'll keep an eye on this one. There's plenty of time for an overtake. John Roberts, we know, needs all the points. Yep. He was just uh, one point ahead going into this, um, this night's race. So... Um, yeah, an extra point is going to uh, is going to help him because uh, yeah, Paul Smith had a great great run that last one. So oh, looks just like does, Malcolm's look, got the pace at the moment. Yeah, though. it does. He looks like he's dropping back a little bit. He's trying, but uh, it's just not happening. Just quickly, Alex Lee Thompson finished forty first in the end. He did get back on the lead lap and he did finish the race. So well done to him. Um, Jake Blackall three laps down, so he could not he could not make it to the finish and score Engine any points. Blown, yeah. Um, let's have a look. Still pretty close, you know. Still seven tenths of a second. So, looks like uh, Robert's car much quicker on a straight line. Let's see what he does. Oh, there. he's got a Very great there. run through the chicane. Has he run out of fuel? Malcolm. To be fair, Scott, Scott Malcolm was coasting a bit towards the end of the lap. Oh, oh lap. that was close, but he keeps it. Yeah. <laughs> he well, just wanted it to be exciting. He thought, oh, they're watching. That was <laughs> one one hundredth of a second, Adam, there between <laughs> Malcolm and Roberts. Well, there you go. Battles all the way down. One hundredth of a second separating the battle for 47th <laughs> on the racetrack. And, um, well, Daniel That's Hunt takes his, takes his second win of the season. His second win for GT Omega as well. That will help solidify their second position in the Teams Championship. Uh, the top three in the Teams Championship go through to the showdown to fight it out for what the majority of the $10,000 prize fund is for. Daniel Hunt then yes. take...
Uh, Daniel Hunt taking the victory with Graham Carroll in second position. Robert Plumley taking a well-deserved podium in third. Russell Laidler in fourth with Dustin Hickman in fifth position. Great job from him. Daniel Kraft in sixth. David Baker in seventh. Linus Bostrom in eighth. Jamie Fluke in ninth. And Andreas Katz from 24th rounds out the top ten. The eleventh. Yeah, sorry, oh, sorry, go on, Andrew. I let, no, I'll, go on. I'll go quickly. Go Paul Smith, 11th, with Summerfield in 12th. Pete Newman in 13th. Sebastian Joe in 14th. And then the reverse grid candidates. Wojciech Svidovic in 15th. Kip Stevens, 16th. Jamie Rushworth, 17th. Sharon Kaiser, 18th. Rob Fag, 19th. Alex Malensky, 20th. 21st, Zanimir Zuzov. 22nd, Stephen Burke. 23rd, Chaz Draycott. 24th, Mark Johnston. 25th, Dan Blake. And then the final reverse grid car in 26th, Maximilian Scheider. Yeah, indeed he was. And um, Alex, I was going to ask you, you've got experience in racing in 35 car fields, not necessarily 53, but um, how great is it when you finish in the on the podium or the top 10 even in, this, in a field like this? That's an awesome feeling, to be honest, you know, when you know that you're that far up and such a huge race. And, you know, I think even the drivers that finish in 10th or 12th will be extremely happy with the result. I mean, did you just have to look to see how hard they have to battle it out in that race to get that kind of a finish so just uh yeah i think anyone in around there are going to be uh going to be delighted and um i think there'll be a few people you know new to the series uh first time privateers as well that have jumped in that are going to be down in uh, sort of 30th place that'll be delighted with that result there's 20 odd cars oh, yeah. still behind them a um, great result for neil bamba who made 20 places up, started 49th, finished 29th. That's the best result in terms of moving forward throughout the field, I believe, that we have in this race. Um, other good ones, Dan Kraft made up 12, Graham Carroll 11, Fluke 11, Katz 14, uh, Svidovic 10, Job 9. So there was some good, there was some, a few good results there. Uh, Draycott 10, um... Jay Wright made up 12 spots and still only finished 27th. Brian Blackford, 48th to 31st. Uh, Steve Richardson, 53rd on the grid to 32nd in the race. There you go. Yeah, that's impressive. I've never, right. I've never seen grid numbers in the 50s, and I'm quite, fr quite frankly, I'm scared. Not all in one class. I've seen a 60-car no. grid with multi-class racing, yes. you know, in, over three different categories, but uh, 60 in one or 55 in one, yeah, awesome. It's um, it's the Wheel of Fortune time. We definitely it, need to get the music cranked on for this, I reckon. It is indeed. Uh, I should have, I should have I, done this. Probably, they're probably sewers for, or something. And, yeah, we'll, and we'll the candidates. Down, <laughs> we'll download it. Go on, Adam. Who's um, who's up for it? Well, the cars that well, the cars that are eligible for the reverse grid are as follows: Wojciech Savidovich, Kip Stevens, Jamie Rushworth, Sharon Kaiser, Rob Fag, Alex Malensky, Stanimir Zuzov, Stephen Burke, Chaz Draycott, Mark Johnston, Dan Blake. Uh, Maximilian Scheider who's going to get uh, that that number for the reverse grid poll you tried Maybe to do that in your best um, game show voice yeah, there as yeah. well didn't you <laughs> right, may, here we may, go. The, may the odds be ever in your favour right here we go 18 20 second need like the 20th. ticker noise yeah oh, it's going to be yeah it's easy it's not even as close this time oh it's pretty similar 20th place it goes to Alex Malensky, so he could be on with a shower of taking his third win of the season if he wins race three. Rob Fagg will be starting in second. He won at Watkins Glen a few weeks ago. Jerome Kaiser hasn't won a race, I think, since season six. Jamie Rushworth in fourth and Kip Stevens in fifth. So Power Max well represented in the top five, but look who's behind. Wojciech Savidovic and Sebastian Job in sixth and seventh place on the grid, uh, with Simon Field not too far behind them as well. So I think we've got all the ingredients for a fantastic race three. That is one of the most mouth-watering grids I think I've ever seen uh, of our reverse grids Alex um, does mean that the likes of Job and Svidovic up near the front really and, and despite having not a, a great second race yeah yeah exactly it just goes to show I mean Svidovic got himself some damage in there and all sorts of stuff went on so but yeah we we normally see them back towards the back somewhat um, in these sort of third races so could be interesting to see uh, how that um uh, pans out. Cats obviously had such a good race in that second one, so he's going to be a bit further behind them. So it just goes to show how the uh, the reverse grids can really ebb and flow the championship um, sort of competing drivers away from each other. So Cats great performance, but now he's uh, he's up against it with his uh, with his rivals getting a head start. Yep, and um, well that head start could be crucial as we head into round three 
of the evening. So it's going to be Alex Smolenski on pole here at Spa Francorchamps for race three. We'll see you after the break. Well, can it get any better? We hope so. We'll see you then. Simulated racing can be awesome, but can also be kind of a free-for-all. Interestingly, auto racing faced the same problem in its earlier days. Whether it was on the back roads, the beaches, or the city streets, the racing was fun. But there was always a certain level of chaos and danger, until some folks came along and put some order to all of this. Stuff like official racetracks, regulations about weight and equipment, and enforcement of standards. That's what gave us high-speed excitement, fast-paced action, and photo finishes. That's when racing became racing. The guys over at iRacing.com have made the same transformation in the world of sim racing. Sure, they've got the most accurate tracks and realistic cars out there, but that's just the start. See, iRacing analyzes the performance and results of each driver in every race. So you can be sure you're always placed in races where the competition will be tight, and that those reckless drivers who ruin it for us all are kept in the pits. Not to mention that with over 45,000 active members already in their vast community, you can find races day and night, so you can always get in on the action. You can even join a league of your favorite series. And since updates are always automatic, you don't have to worry about software and can focus on the track. Zip up your fire suit and check out iRacing.com.
the outside contact made. 56 slides in at a four. Who's oh, gonna be at the stripe? Did he even give it to Ryan Truex? Truex is your winner over Tandy. For the final time this evening, the British Sim Racers Touring Car Championship Pro Series is at Spa Francorchamps in Belgium. Andrew Woodhouse, Adam Bath, and Alex Simpson with you. And Adam, I'll bring you in first. We've got Alex Mineski on pole position, 20 cars reversed. Is it going to match the uh, the quality of the races we've had so far? Well, before you went to commercial break, you said we had a mouth-watering uh, grid for this fifth and final race, and I have to agree with that. Let's run you through. Uh, the top 20, Alex Manensky on pole position, Robert Fagg in second, Jerome Kaiser in third, Jamie Rushworth in fourth, Kip Stevens in fifth, Wojciech Savinovic in sixth, Sebastian Job is in seventh, Pete Newman is in eighth, Simon Field in ninth, and Paul Smith in tenth position. Eleventh, Andreas Katz. So the top 11 are all race winners. Jamie Fluke, 12th, Linus Bergström, 13th, David Baker, 14th, Daniel Kraft, 15th, Dustin Hickman in 16th, Russell Layla, 17th, Robert Plumley, 18th, Graham Carroll, 19th and Daniel Hunt the race 2 winner rounding out the top 20 so many race winners in that top 20 and so many championship contenders as well towards the front of the pack and I think really Savinovic and Stevens two uh, brilliant racers season 1 and season 2 champion in, in Stevens season 6 champion and championship leader in Wojciech Savinovic both hard racers those two are going to be brilliant to watch at the start yeah, I completely agree with that as well. I think it's going to be fantastic up there. Um, Alex Simpson, World Championship driver. Uh, Alex, you're used to these big grids, as we mentioned in the last round, but um, you're also used to tight competition at the front. What what can we see here? What do you think is going to happen? Yeah, I think this third race is going to be a little bit more, um, more interesting based on um, just that epic grid that Adam just read out there. I mean, that's got a good combination of drivers, the talent at the front there. It's going to be difficult for anyone to make any moves. They're all going to be slipstreaming each other um, to 
as much as they possibly can into uh, Lacombe. That seems to be the favourite spot for everybody to make moves. So it's going to be difficult for people like Cats that are a little bit further back to make progress in this one. Um, I can see perhaps uh, you know a 10 or 15 car uh, pack at the end of this race up front, which you know will just uh, cap our evening off just uh, perfectly. Yeah, we think it could be one of the best races we've ever seen, Adam. Run us through that top 20. Again? Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry, have you done it already? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> well, I can run you through the championship. No, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, the updated championship standings uh, going into this race. Uh, Savinovic's uh, lead is pretty much the same going into this race. We're using 484 point lead over David Baker. Cats in third. Uh, Chepolevsky continues to lose ground after finishing in 46th in, in race two. He's, he's still in fourth. With Simon Fields in fifth ever improving. Alex Malensky in 6th position. This could be a great opportunity for him to leap inside that top 5. Kip Stevens in 7th. Uh, it's really close actually in the battle for 7th with Kip Stevens in 7th. Kip Stevens in 7th. Sebastian Job in 8th. Jimmy Rushworth in 9th and Pete Newman in 10th. And then if you go down to Lee Thompson in 11th those top, those 4 or 5 cars are separated by just over 100 or so points. So a bad position for what, a bad finish for one of those guys could definitely knock them down the order and possibly even out of the showdown. Lee Thompson will be eager to get back inside that top ten after blowing that engine in after having that huge crash going into Blanchemont in race two. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. It's been a long day. <laughs> um, well, it's been the, a frantic two races. Frantic two races, uh, indeed. And we're going to see a fantastic third one, it seems. It's about a minute away from when the cars are going to go to the grid. Is this race going to favour anyone in particular, Alex? Do you think as, as we're in the third race of the evening, anyone's going to, um, you know, anyone going to be uh, putting their experience to good use here? Well, I think they've all got to put their experience to good use out there. It's the short answer to that question. <laughs> I'm um, just going to go home now. It's just, it's just too to close bed. up front there. <laughs> There's no way. Um, I